Hey everyone, how are you? I'm just checking to make sure that we are on and we are and welcome. I am Reverend Kimberly Salik O'Deal. This is uh, my home and yes, this is indeed a Christmas tree. So if you've never seen a Christmas tree up in uh, at the end of March, well now you have. Why do I have it here? Well, many reasons. Uh, one, I just didn't have time to take it down. Two, uh, I like the lights. And three, it gives a nice space in my house, which is normally um, uh, very, very big and spacious. Um, so it gives me a nice little space so that I can uh, worship with you all today. Uh, we're going to just start our service with a little bit of settling down, if you wish. I invite you, uh, I invite you to take a breath, maybe feel your feet on the floor. Maybe notice that um, the most important thing is happening right now in this moment, and that's all that we need to get through, one moment at a time, one breath at a time. I find that when I start thinking about too much that's going on, especially in the world right now, because it seems to be a little bit... Um, overwhelming if I think about it for too long. And I get a little, thank you, Jim. That was my husband who just gave me a poem that I need for the end of the service. It does seem to make me um, feel like I can't quite uh, settle. And I don't know if any of you are having that settling issue, but it is kind of hard to feel like I can settle sometimes. And I need to actually take space to do that. Take a moment to know where I am, to look at my surroundings, even if I am in front of a Christmas tree in the end of March. I'm going to play for you uh, just maybe a verse or two of our a hymn that we're going to sing later. We're only going to sing one verse, um, but I'm going to play that for you, a little, uh, a little arrangement of it, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, and then we're going to move ahead with our service. I have posted, if you wish, the lyrics to the service. Um, they are on my Facebook page, if anybody wants to go there and see it. They're also um, on our church's Facebook page. Uh, just one post down from this one. And here, uh, breathe on me, breath of God, and I invite you to take this time to settle in whatever way helps you to settle.
Here is a poem uh, that I found on um, Hello Poetry, which is a website for poems. Uh, this poem is by uh, Samanyan Lakshmin Arayanan. It's called God's Breath. The door opened on its own. Who is it? asked the mom from the kitchen. It's the wind, mom said the child to the mom. Not waiting for a permission, the wind would come in. Pushing the door open, who could stop it? I'm not a guest, it would say. The wind is God's breath. Mine too. Since our theme is Emmanuel, which is God with us, for the season of Lent, let's sing a cappella the refrain to O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. I have a litany. Reverend Tom Schumann on his blog, uh, I think it's lectionary litanies. I may have that title wrong, but he has written a litany for every Sunday in Lent. I will read it uh, for you. If you have it, you may follow along, but you might have to wait until after the silence where I, where I uh, copied you all on it. Reverend Tom Schumann says, In these days we ask, can our hopes live? And you whisper, to the buds on the trees eager to burst. Notice the flowers poking their heads out of the dirt. Watch the children chalking spring on the sidewalks. And we see how you love us, God of steadfast love. In these moments, we wonder, can our compassion live? And you tell us, wipe the tears of a worried father over his son's illness. Ease the weariness of a mother facing a long shift at work. Shop for the neighbor who has not family. And we see how you love us, our resurrection and our life. In the shadows of each night, we cry out, Can our love live? And you sing to us, Witness the touch of a wife on her husband's papery skin. Pay attention to the birds which rush in the sky before spiraling down. Share the words you are given to offer to the empty-hearted. And we shall see how you love us, breath of our souls. Let's sit for a moment in some silence. Creator of life, bring us hope, we pray. Mourner of the dead, take away our fears, we pray. Refresher of dry lives, bind us to God forever. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And next we're going to sing, and we're going to do it a cappella because very low voice. We're just going to sing the first verse, a breathe on me breath, O God. Breathe on me breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I might love as thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Friends at American Baptist Church in Fort Collins, we are a small congregation. We usually have about 40 or 50 on a Sunday morning. and um, But we love having people join us. So feel free after all of this is over, um, who knows how long that's going to take to join us. And um, 
and we have a few ministries that go on there. We, um, we have a book group, we have some Sunday school, we have children and youth ministry that I do. Uh, we have um, a 12 step recovery uh, oriented ministry. It's not quite 12 step recovery, but it is based on Richard Rohr's Breathing Underwater book, which goes through the 12 steps. Um, and uh, we have a choir and a music ministry. So uh, feel free to check us out. Uh, we also meet on Zoom on Sunday mornings. It's a little more intimate. Um, the, the, the service doesn't last as long as the Facebook Live service lasts as far as uh, how long it stays up. But, um, but uh, feel free to, to ask us about that. And um, so we're all in this together, aren't we? All of our churches are now not closed. No most churches are not closed. They are moved to online or into telephone. And the nice thing about Zoom is that you can just call in with your telephone. So we have some uh, people who are less technically uh, advanced and do not have computers, and they join us on the phone. It's a beautiful thing for us all to be together. And at this time, we are going to talk a little bit about confession. Uh, confession is not a time for us to beat ourselves up. It has a bad rap. It really is just a time for us to invite God into every part of us. The God who uh, created us, the God who loves us. Uh, some people, um, I know a lot of my friends on Facebook are not uh, Christians, so maybe think in terms of the God of your understanding or um, uh, whatever works for you. Uh, but it is a chance for us to just allow um, a love that is beyond anything we could ever imagine to permeate into all those areas of ourselves that maybe hold some shame or disharmony or resentment or fear. So we will do this for a moment of silence and then we will sing um, our Lamb of God. And uh, the lyrics are, this is different from other Lamb of Gods that you may have done. Um, we wrote this, I wrote this for our church uh, and the lyric is Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. We do that twice. And then we sing, grant us your peace, grant us your peace, Lamb of God, grant us your peace. So please join me in some silence. who is gracious and merciful and loving certainly has already forgiven us. So celebrate in that. Celebrate in knowing that there is nothing wrong with you. Maybe we do things out of fear and resentment and hurt and anger, but there's nothing wrong with you. You are created 
in God's own image with God's mark of love on your heart. May you walk knowing this as true. Amen. The next part of our service, we share our joys and concerns. We've had a few prayers, prayer requests that have come up in recent days. And um, I would like to uh, please uh, lift up all uh, family and friends and people who might be traveling or stuck uh, where they were traveling to and are unable to be home. We lift up those who um, have family members who are ill, uh, whether they are ill from uh, the coronavirus or ill from uh, cancer or heart disease or stroke or ALS or another illness. We lift up our uh, doctors and nurses and CNAs and respiratory therapists and lab technicians and analysts and supervisors and uh, housekeeping uh, and security and all hospital uh, personnel, both uh, both medical staff and um, the hospital staff and chaplains. Uh, we lift all of them up at this time. We pray for uh, for our country and for our world and ask that we have in God's wisdom and uh, think, think about uh, how what we do affects uh, those around us. We uh, pray for our communities, um, our communities both in our towns and also in our cities and in our states and um, our uh, communities online as well. We pray for people who are seeking recovery from uh, addictions and uh, eating disorders, people with um, med med mental health issues, people um, with severe anxiety, people who are homeless, uh, experiencing homelessness. Um, and we pray for all of those uh, agencies and, and folks who uh, work to help them. Um, we also uh, lift up uh, a friend, uh, a friend of mine's family. Um, he, he just passed away, so I would like to lift up um, his family and uh, those of us who have experienced loss and are grieving. So the way we end this time is by saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We have a different way of praying our, uh, the Lord's Prayer. For us, our Lord's Prayer, we start our Creator, Father, and Mother of us all. So please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, Father, and Mother of us all, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not abandon us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, at this time, we normally... Hi, Lindsay. Lindsay is here. Don't forget all the restaurant workers and the grocery store folks. Okay, we have several other prayer requests coming in, so we're going to add them right now. Uh, let's lift up uh, restaurant workers, uh, pizza delivery people. Um, people who are uh, working at essential jobs, at gas stations, um, in sanitation. Uh, we pray for, um, for all of those uh, people. We pray for their safety and their health and well-being and, um, and uh, their, for their families as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we also lift up to you those who are um, maybe more vulnerable uh, already who have um, heart disease or who have had experienced stroke or who have asthma or um, some other immune comprom compromised or immune compromised otherwise. So we lift them all up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Right now, we are going to talk for a moment about offering. And I know I'm a Baptist minister and uh-oh, here's the offering. So um, normally we have an offering at this at this time in our service, but what I uh, invite you to do, especially um, those who are not normally a part of our church, if you're part of another church, please consider remembering them and uh, sending them uh, some whatever it is that you can. If not, then I encourage you to uh, donate to um, your local food pantry to your local uh, uh, homeless shelter, uh, to uh, local agencies that are uh, helping uh, people who are in great need at this time. Now, we have a little story. 
This story is from the prophet Ezekiel. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a setting here as I flip my pages around. So the setting for this goes like this. The people were in exile. It's interesting, right, that this scripture comes up now because I think many of us feel like we're in exile. Perhaps some of you are excited to be, be, to be home and perhaps some of you are excited to be able to go out and work. Perhaps others of you are not excited for either one. It does seem as if we are in exile and we've been exiled by this uh, disease, this virus that has killed uh, thousands of people around the world. And that seems to be seems to be destroying life as we know it. In the United States, we're pretty lucky. Some of us are pretty lucky in the United States. Some of us are not. Already, we come into the situation with a, an issue of homelessness, an issue of addiction, an issue of extreme poverty, an issue of domestic violence, an issue of mental illness all across the board in this country. And there's no place to escape that. And now we have a virus. Many who already felt exiled feel more exiled. And those of us who had no idea what exile feels like are experiencing it now. So this is during the first exile in uh, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. And some of you may have heard this. Those of you who have maybe grown up in church camp, you might remember that song, Dem Bones, Dem Bones, Dem Dry Bones. Well, this is the scripture that it comes from. But first, I have another little song to teach you. And I know I might be jumping ahead because this song doesn't actually happen until the end, but I want to teach you the song so when we get to the end, you'll know it and you'll start to see, oh, what it is that's happening here. We have plenty of time to sit in the dark valley. We're sitting in the valley now. So I'm going to show you the hope right now in this song. So God says to, to call on the four winds. That this is what's going to happen. God is going to call on the four winds and bring breath to the people of Israel. Bring new life. Bring God's own. We've talked about several times. Ruach is the breath of God that, that God breathes into humanity at the very beginning of creation. It is the breath of God that is in each and every single one of us at all times. So the lyrics are, come from the four winds. Come breath. Breathe on these slain bodies, breathe on these dry bones, breathe, breathe, breathe. And I invite you every time we sing this song, which will be at least twice, I invite you to imagine that you are in a desert valley. It's dry, the ground is dry, the... Um, the bones that are around you are dry and you cannot see life anywhere. Now, don't get too caught up in that if that's too to a place of flowers in abundance, okay? We are in a place of, of dry bones already. We are already in a place where it seems like maybe some of us can't even find our breath or don't know if we're breathing or don't understand what is happening around us or don't see life around us, see only despair and destruction. So... Only go there if you, if you feel comfortable going there. Imagine that somebody comes along and is strong enough to say a word or two and bring life back into being. This is the kind of strength that we sing this song. So we're going to give this a try. Come 
from the four winds Come breath Breathe on these slain bodies Breathe on these dry bones Breathe, breathe, breathe Come from the four winds And here is what happened. Ezekiel 37, beginning with verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and the Lord brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. The Lord led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. The Lord said to me, Mortal! Can these bones live? I answered, Oh God, you know. Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to these bones, speak to them. You tell them what it is that I am saying right now. You say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath inside of you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. You shall know that I am the Lord. You shall know that I am. So I prophesied as God said. Ezekiel says, I prophesied to those bones. And I said to those bones, oh, dry bones, oh, bones that you think that you are gone and dead and wasted. Oh, bones that you think there is no hope for you. Listen to me. I have a word from the Lord. The Lord God says to these bones, the Lord God says to you, dry bones, you who feel hopeless, you who feel like there is no life in you, you who cannot have your own breath, the Lord God says to you, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath inside of you. And you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. God says, you shall know that I am the Lord. God says, you shall know that I am, that I am, that I am the Lord. I am always with you. I am your God. I will not leave you or abandon you. I am your God. I will bring life back to you. And then Ezekiel says, I prophesied and I looked. And there were sinews on those bones. And flesh had come upon those bones, those dry bones that were basically useless, basically out there with no possibility of ever moving or dancing or singing or crying. I saw the flesh come upon those bones and skin. But there was still no breath. They were still bones with sinew and skin and flesh and no breath. God was obviously not finished with Ezekiel at this time, was God? So Ezekiel continues to say this. Then God said to me, 
You prophesy to the dry bones, and that is very good. Now I want you to prophesy to the breath. I want you, God says, to speak to the breath. Now, mind you, Ezekiel was a human. Ezekiel was a human. Why would Ezekiel think that Ezekiel could speak something and bring life into something else that had already lost its hope? God uses humans to do God's work. Ezekiel said yes to God. And this is what happened. The Lord said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal. God called Ezekiel a mortal, knowing that Ezekiel someday would be a pile of bones, would be that lifeless as far as it is here on this earth. Knowing that Ezekiel was mortal, God said, you prophesy to them. You be my voice. You prophesy to the breath and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath. Come from the four winds. Come from all the places where wind comes from. Come breath. Come true breath. Come into this breath that is lifeless and bring it alive. You come all the breath, not just a little bit from over here and a little bit from over there, all of the breath, all of the wind, all of it. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain bodies. Breathe upon these slain bodies. Breath come, breath come alive from the wind and breathe upon these slain bodies. Breathe upon them so they will live. Now, I don't think God said this in a very nice and sweet and, and laid back way. God wasn't sitting there saying, oh, you need to just, just call on the four winds. Just call them up. Give them a call. They'll come over. They'll breathe on the slain bodies. There'll be life. There'll be breath. Everybody will be happy. God had a sense of what Ezekiel and the people had gone through. I believe there was a passion in there. I believe that God so desperately wanted to see the people reconnected with God and with each other. That God didn't just laissez-faire, invite the wind to come. It was a command. God was commanding the wind to come. Sometimes I think about when I was a child and, you know, my parent, my father was a pastor and, and, uh, and so, um, that might explain a little bit, uh, to some of you who know me, but my father was a pastor. My mom was a school teacher. And, uh, I always knew when, when, uh, something was serious because it, They were playful and they were fun, but when something was serious, when something needed to happen, Kimberly, get out of the street, or Kimberly, get your hand off the stove, something that was so desperate and it would come out of them like it was a command and it was forceful and it was like that because this was life and death, because they cared about me and loved me. God cared about and cares about the people. God cares about the suffering. God cares about the exile. So when God said to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, say this, speak these words, listen carefully, speak these words. You are my voice right now. You speak these words to these people because if you do not, they may not hear me. They may not know 
They may not know that there is hope. They may not know that there is breath. They may not know that I am here. Speak these words. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain bodies that they may live. And you know what happened. <laughs> Much like when my parents told me that I better get myself in gear for something, or I better get out of the street, or I better get my hand away from that stove, Ezekiel did what he was told. Ezekiel says, I prophesied as the Lord commanded me. And I told those who had no breath. I told those who had no hope. I told those who were separated from their loved ones. I told those who had lost their mother, father, grandmother, spouse, friend. I told those who were working and working and working and working and working to help other people so that they can recover and get better and maybe they can, maybe they can live, but some of them don't live. I told them even though they were getting at risk of getting sick themselves and some of them did get sick and some of them did die. I told them, I told them, I told them that there would be breath, that God was with them, that they could be connected with one another. I told them, and I spoke very clearly as God instructed. Ezekiel was one of those people. God chose Ezekiel because Ezekiel was one of the people who were exiled. One of those who felt they had no breath or life in them. But after they stood up and they were breathing, we got to get back to the story. Uh, I sometimes go way off script here. After they get up, and they were breathing, and they had life back in them again. There was a vast multitude of them. The Lord said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, God said, I want you to tell them this. Thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from out of your graves. O oh, my people, O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. I am the Lord. That doesn't mean, friends, that we have to know that God is almighty and powerful and wonderful for the sake of God's own sense of self-esteem. No, this is so that we can know that God is, which means that God is with us, ever present. You shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act. And how will the people who were once dry bones, completely cut off from one another, from their families, from their community, from their love, from their hope, how will these people know? Because Ezekiel, So what does this say to us? I don't think for a minute that this is a scripture or a story about us uh, expecting resurrection in this life necessarily. It doesn't matter sometimes how hard we pray. Some of us do pray very, very hard at the loss of a loved one. This is not about that. This is about how it is that we, when we feel dead inside, disconnected and exiled can come back. We 
much like Ezekiel, are called to do something very similar for one another. Many of us are in our homes, staying here, so that we don't go out and spread a virus that could kill thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. We care for our neighbor. We are concerned about what's happening to people who have no place to rest their head at this time. We are concerned about those who don't have health insurance. We're concerned about those who work in the medical field and are at risk every single day trying to help others. We are called to speak to the breath and say with fierceness and with certainty, come from the four winds, come breath and breathe on these slain bodies. And friends, sometimes we are called to be the breath of God. Let's sing our song one more time. Come from the four winds, come breath, breathe on these slain bodies, breathe on these travels, breathe, breathe, breathe. Come from the four winds, come breath. slain bodies breathe on these to close I have a poem this poem is written by Neil Klein on August 26, 2018. It is uh, found, can be found on his uh, blog, uh, Life After Emily, E M I L E E dot com. Emily was his wife, and this blog is about how he finds breath and can be amongst the living while still grieving and loving his dear Emily. This poem is called Breath of God. Vapors on a cold wintry night, when breath is seen, invisible made visible. Momentary clouds materialize only to dissolve vapors that float and move towards, away from, away from the mouth of God, towards the one chosen. This is how a feather moves on a stream of vapor uttered from her and him. For she is he and he is she, and both are they and both are God. The feather moves, an angel flutters her wings. Caressed by God's breath, it moves as in a dream. It dances. It undulates towards the chosen one, the one God has chosen to receive such an embrace. And the feather dances with spirit, spirit of time, boundless time, no time, eternity, for it is blessed with God's breath, and it dances on vapors, wisps of love. <laughs> So may the peace of Christ be with you, the love of God always inside of you. And may with every breath, you know that is God's breath. And may you give that to the world. Amen. Blessings to you all. Much love to each of you. Bye-bye.